So what I'll do is give you a very brief orientation to the graphic user interface for the Instructor tablet. Down the left hand side, there are a series of uh, interventions that you can make. So if you want to initiate CPR straight away in a scenario, you can tap on that button. If you want to create a PEA event, you tap on that and obviously it will change physiologically, change the uh, patient state into a PEA. If you choose, you can take off the artifact, but what's fantastic about the software with SkillCube series, Cube series is that it automatically applies artifact once somebody is uh, on the chest. So what I mean by that is when you're using the CPR sensor in conjunction with the system, as soon as that sensor starts activating, because it's been moved up and down on the chest of the patient, whether it's an infant, child, adult, uh, artifact will automatically get applied so that um, clinicians, as they're looking at the device monitor, will only see artifact. They would actually have to take their hands off the sensor to see the underlying rhythm, um, which is really helpful um, in terms of clinical device accuracy. The next icon uh, relates to the uh, ventilator. And what's really helpful with this Cube Series um, system is that you get a generic ventilator skin and you also get a generic defibrillator monitor skin, which I absolutely love. And all I've done is gone into the actual ventilation um, settings. If I go further down then, um, in terms of defibrillation pads, if you wanted to um, activate that, you can. So I've just started a scenario effectively by pressing that button. Below here, you'll see there are three more icons, well, four, but three ones we use typically. The first one is the temperature, and the second one is the blood sugar, and the third one is for heart, lung, bowel sounds. Now remember, this is the instructor tablet, so this is for you to make those changes, and then, for example, if the participant wants to listen to heart, lung, bowel sounds, they can then go to the participant tablet, and I'm going to show that to you separately in a moment. Um, if I come back to the top of the graphic user interface, you'll see that there's a red button that's saying pause or end scenario because I started the scenario earlier. Um, but if I wanted to stop it, all I have to do is press that and then press end scenario. Um, but what I'll do is just keep the scenario going for now. If uh, I want to apply you know, ECG leads um, with say you know, the, the CPR sensor, then I can go in and tap ECG leads, press 12 lead, and now we're beginning to get the, um, the rhythm up on the monitor. Now we'll get some sats, and we'll get some end tidal, and we'll get a rest spread. Um, you can do invasive blood pressure as well, of course, but um, that just depends on obviously how you're running your scenario, who it's being delivered to, in terms of the level of um, care that they're able to provide. So. In the middle of the screen, you'll notice there are these roller balls. So you can move those up and down and then press send and that will actually send the data immediately to the device interface. But what you could do if you wanted is change it to, say I've changed it to 136 and I'm now going to make that go trend over 20 seconds, for example. So I'm just tapping the little plus signal that's down here on the side and I've moved that to 20 seconds and then I'm pressing send. So that's now going to the actual device. So what will happen is the heart rate will go up to about 136 over a 20 second period, which is great. Really simple, quick way of inter interfacing with the device. Down this side then, you have a number of buttons which allow you bring in lots of additional information. So if I tap the menu button, for example, and what I'll do is I'll just cancel that um, and what I'm going to do is just bring the heart rate back down again because uh, I've got too many alarms going off at the moment. So what I'll do is I'm going to tap the media button. So if you created any media in a pre-built scenario that you can create in KubeCloud because this is a free platform that we give you for building scenario content. You can add in media, it could be a video grab, it could be somebody talking to camera like I'm doing right now. But if that's something you want to bring into the scenario that will be helpful for participants because you've built the media, it can get sent to the participant tablet either as part of a briefing or a pre-briefing for the scenario or as part of the scenario itself. And hypothetically, if you imagine this, the uh, crew have just arrived on scene 
for the scenario, but they're playing the, the, the roles they're supposed to play if it's a pre-hospital setting. And you could actually push that media to the participant device and they press play. And so suddenly they get a screen grab of a YouTube video of a rollover that's just happened. So they get an idea of the layout and potentially how many um, how many people involved in the incident. So I'm just gonna cancel that. Then we have an event button. So if you wanted to build a series of, um, of assessment activities, you could like DCAP BTLS for trauma or sampler or um, OPQRST. And um, you can do that and then tick these things off as the participants go through the scenario. All of these are then time stamped in the log, which is really helpful. Believe it or not, you can send a page to the actual participant tablet. So if uh, you wanted to page a doctor, if you wanted to send a page to people working pre-hospital, they've got on scene, but they never gave a sit rep, you can do that. So you can actually send prompts to participants. The biggest benefit of the Skill Cube Cube series system is that they're giving you this resource that allows you send information or allow participants interact with that information from the participant tablet to support the critical thinking. So therefore, you don't have to necessarily be in the room prompting them or you don't have to use the voice of God. And these are ways that we can keep these people immersed and supporting their critical thinking journey for the patient management that they're going to experience. Uh, if I go down to menu, you'll notice here that it gives us a couple of different icons, but one of them that's important here is definitely the training log. So at the end of every session, if you end the scenario, it will save a log automatically, which I'll come back to. Also, there's a CPR uh, category option here. So you can pre-select, is it for infant, children, or adult in terms of the scenario? Uh, that can be done when you're building the scenario, but if you want to do it on the fly, if you just want to use the system on the fly, you can. And you can just start a scenario and then go in and go, oh, actually, we're working with an infant today, so let's just select infant. And then you've got your CPR data in here as well. Uh, so when we're actually using the uh, ventilation center, CPR sensor in live view on the instructor tablet, you'll get that information. But like any device like a Zolex or Core Pulse or even LifePack, you should be able to get your CPR data um, on the actual physical interface screen as you would normally with a real clinical device. However, if you're just using uh, the generic defibrillator monitor screen, you can still use the CPU sensor and you will still get that feedback here in the instructor device, as you will for using it with any device. But uh, if you actually are using you know, a legitimate device that has uh, CPU sensors built into the pads, then you will get that on the, uh, on the display there. So I'm just going to close that so that we can go back to the main graphic user interface. And what I'll do in the next short video is show you how we then uh, interact with the participant tablet and the ventilation sensor and CPU sensor and go from there.